Question 5 is about the photoelectric effect, and question 6 is about energy levels. A lot of people seem to get mixed up between the photoelectric effect and energy levels, especially when the exam board tries to catch you out by mixing them both up in the same question. So let's go through the differences between them. So the photoelectric effect, that's the effect whereby electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal when radiation of a sufficiently high frequency falls on it. It's important to realise that when we talk about the photoelectric effect, we're not talking about individual atoms, we're talking about lumps of metal, things like that, or that, or that. Pieces of metal, and if radiation falls on them, and the radiation's got the right frequency, electrons can be emitted. So if I shine radiation on these objects, if the radiation's got the right frequency, the photoelectric effect will occur. Obviously in this case, we're not able to tell if electrons have been emitted because we don't have any means of detecting them. But in a lab with proper apparatus, like a electroscope, we'll be able to detect whether this radiation from this torch had the right frequency to cause the photoelectric effect in these different metals. Now the photoelectric effect affects metals. We've got to think what's special about metals. Well, we learn when we're learning about electricity that metals have a delocalised electron cloud. In other words, some of the electrons from each atom don't stay with their own atom, they become sort of detached from their own atom, and they're able to move through the metal as a whole. So those are the electrons that we're talking about for the photoelectric effect. So we don't think about them being inside any one atom, and we certainly don't mention energy levels when we're trying to answer questions about this. And if you remember, we actually learnt about photoelectric effect before we'd learned about energy levels. So you don't need to mention energy levels to explain it. And if you do try and mention energy levels, you're going to get yourself confused and get the question wrong. So when we're dealing with photoelectric effect, we don't mention energy levels, but we do have to mention energy, because it does take energy to make an electron leave the surface of the metal. It doesn't take the same amount of energy for every electron. Some of the electrons are really easy to remove, some of them are more difficult to remove. The ones that are the easiest to remove, the ones that require the least energy, that amount of energy is given a special name. We call that amount of energy the work function. Give it the Greek symbol phi. So that's the amount of energy required to remove the electrons that are easiest to remove. So the work function is the energy that's needed if an electron is able to escape. Where is this energy going to come from? Well, it's all about what happens when you shine radiation. So the energy must be coming from the radiation. Which for some metals it might be visible light. For other metals, it might be ultraviolet radiation. We can only explain the effect if we think of radiation as behaving as little particles of energy called photons. You can't explain this effect by talking about waves. So that's why I've introduced the idea that radiation sometimes behaves as little particles of energy called photons. So the energy of photons is given by e equals HF, where F is the frequency that describes the behaviour of that radiation if we're thinking of it as waves. So for the photoelectric effect to occur, the photon's got to have enough energy to give the electron the energy it needs to escape from the surface. And the energy it needs to escape from the surface is the work function, this is for the easiest electrons. The energy that the photon's got is given by HF, so for the photoelectric effect to occur, we must have HF must be at least equal to phi. If the frequency is such so that HF is just equal to phi, then that's like the minimum frequency that's big enough to cause the effect, so we call that the threshold frequency. So HF equals phi, the frequency that gives that equation is the, the threshold frequency. If the radiation's got a higher frequency, that means the photon's got more energy. So the photon's got enough energy to provide the electron with the energy it needs, the work function, and then there's still, still some left over. And that energy that's left over will be the kinetic energy of the emitted electron. So we can write an equation. HF, that's the energy coming in with the photon, is equal to phi, that's the energy that the electron requires to be able to leave the surface, and any energy left over, the difference between what comes in and what you need to get off the surface, that's left over, that energy will be the kinetic energy of the electron. We notice that in the equation it's called EK max, that's the maximum kinetic energy. And the reason it's the maximum kinetic energy is because remember, phi, the work function, is the energy it takes to make the easiest electrons escape from the surface. Some electrons are held more tightly, and they require more energy. So if it takes more energy than phi to get the electrons to leave the surface, less energy is left over to be kinetic energy. So most electrons 
will actually have less kinetic energy than this. But that's the maximum that any electron could have. When we're talking about energy levels, on the other hand, we're dealing with what goes on inside individual atoms. And atoms are actually only individual and separate from other atoms, if we're dealing with a gas really, but don't just have to worry too much about that. And what the basic ideas are, the basic idea is that inside an atom, electrons can only have fixed amounts of energy, and we call those the energy levels. And normally, electrons will tend to occupy the lowest available energy level, which is called the ground state. An electron that was in the ground state can move to a higher level if it's given extra energy. And then we say it's in an excited state. Now there's various ways that an electron can be given that extra energy it needs to move to a higher level. Could just be by heating, or it could be by passing electric current through the gas. If you're passing electric current through the gas, it means you've got electrons whizzing through the gas, and those electrons could collide with the electrons in the atom, and give energy to the electrons in the atom. When that happens, by the way, we usually don't have to worry about what's become of the electron that came whizzing in. Don't worry about that. We only ever talk about the electrons that are inside the atom being given energy by colliding with other things from outside. We don't worry about the things that came from outside. There is another way of putting an electron into a higher energy level, and that's if the atom absorbs photons of the right energy. But we haven't really dealt with the photons coming out yet, so let's not worry about them coming in. So when an electron is in an excited state, it's unstable. So it can't stay in that state for long. So it's going to tend to drop back to the ground state. Now it might do that all in one jump, or it might actually go through several in-between energy levels. But either way, when an electron drops down energy levels, it's got to get rid of energy. And it does that by giving out a photon. Now the energy of a photon is given by HF, where F is the frequency that we use to describe the behaviour of that radiation if we think of it as a wave. So the energy of a photon, HF, that must be the amount of energy that the electron had to get rid of when it jumped and gave out that photon. So therefore we get that equation. The HF is the difference in energy levels. Now if an electron was in the ground state and it was given enough energy, it might not just move up to a higher energy level, it might be to leave the atom completely. In which case we'd say the atom has been ionised. And the amount of energy needed to get the electron from the ground state to be ionised is called the ionisation energy. And when we're dealing with questions about energy levels, we have to notice that the, the energy levels actually have negative values. And that's because we choose to define zero as being outside the atom. So when you get an electron to come outside the atom, and it's not affected by the atom anymore, they say it's got zero energy, but you have to give it more energy to get it there. So if you've got to give it extra energy to get to where you're going to say the energy is zero, it must have had negative energy to begin with. And then the other warning when we're dealing with energy levels, take care with the units. Take care to notice whether the units are in electron volts or in joules. Because we're going to be using E equals HF, got to work in joules. But often it's more convenient to work in electron volts, so just take care there.